Ten Commandments in the Quran Part 2 Part 2 of Three Commandments I.V. Description First five commandments are part of God's rule book guiding us through today's world. First commandment, join not anything in worship with God, shirk. The first commandment is the most important and easiest one. It is meant for the whole human race, the most severe in punishment, yet it is a commandment from which people have strayed far away. Ignoring the first prohibition is what leads to all other evils. It ruins all worship and works which depend on it. Idolatry, known as shirk in Arabic, is more than serving idols. It is believing in a God besides the one true God who alone deserves worship and service. Prohibiting idolatry is to affirm its opposite, proper belief in and worship of God. Proper belief in God is the cornerstone of Islamic faith, and all other commands and prohibitions rely on it. Second Commandment be good and dutiful to parents. Given the often tense relation between the generations, this commandment is particularly relevant to our times. Most kids these days are angry. They are very angry at their parents and their childhood. Maybe they were hurt when they were vulnerable. Parents are imperfect. Many people think their parents do not deserve any respect, yet God commands us to be kind to them. They are not to be spoken harshly to or mistreated. Instead, they are to be taken care of and shown the best manners. Parents are so important that that they are placed right after duty to God. At the same time, we are supposed to honor, not worship, the parents. God comes before parents. God, the Creator, is to be thanked for what we have, His matchless gifts to every one of us. After God, we owe our existence to our parents who brought us in this life. They are not only to be treated fairly, but favor must be shown to them. They are to be treated kindly by the way we speak to them, the way we act towards them, and to financially support them, if need be. Third Commandment, Kill Not Your Children Because of Poverty The ancient Arabs would kill their children out of fear of poverty. But who would kill their own children who are so susceptible and vulnerable in an age of civilization? Yearly around 750,000 children are reported missing in the United States, around 2,000 every. Around 100 children are abducted and murdered in the U.S. each. About 100 to 200 children are killed in Britain per. The killers are mostly parents. According to the Society for the Prevention of Infanticide. Today, infanticide is still most commonly seen in areas of severe. Fourth commandment, come not near to shameful sins whether committed openly or secretly. This commandment deals with sexual conduct to protect the family structure. What are shameful sins? Islam teaches that they are adultery, fornication, incest, and homosexuality. Violation of the family unit is a crime against God and humanity. Unfortunately, these sins have become so commonplace that it has altered society's perception of it. In modern times, society has developed new expressions that soften the sin of adultery. Many are too coarse to repeat, but ones that are not include fooling around, sleeping around, flings, and affairs. These phrases create a notion that adultery is guilt-free and hurts no one. Some people even suggest that it's just a recreational activity like playing ball or going to the movies. Furthermore, some assert they have a beneficial aspect to them. The truth is that these acts bring God's extreme displeasure. Such sins undermine human society, and laws regulating sexual behavior are part of every viable civilized community. How prevalent is adultery? More than one-third of men and one-quarter of women admit having had at least one extramarital sexual experience. Samuel Janus and Cynthia Janus the Janus Report on Sexual Behavior, New York. John Wiley and Sons, 1993, 169. An article in a 1997 issue of Newsweek magazine noted that various surveys suggest that as many as 30% of male Protestant ministers have had sexual relationships with women other than their wives. Kenneth Woodward. Sex, Morality and the Protestant Minister. Newsweek, July 28, 1997, 62. The Quran lays down several steps to curb moral decadence spread by shameful sins. 1. Institution of marriage. 2. Emphasis on dress code for women. 3. Avoiding temptations by lowering the gaze for both men and women. 4. Prohibition to enter others' people's houses uninvited. 5th Commandment.
kill not anyone whom God has forbidden. Islam views the human body as a structure built by God that no one has the right to destroy. Human life is respected and protected as one's body belongs to God. Allah, the Exalted, states, On account of his deed, we decreed to the children of Israel that if anyone kills a person unless in retribution for murder or spreading corruption in the land it is as if he kills all mankind. While if any saves a life it is as if he saves the lives of all mankind. 532. Due to Cain's murder of his brother. I informed the Israelites that any person who kills another person for no valid reason, such as legal retribution or as punishment for causing corruption in the land by treason or waging war it. He says if he has killed all people, since he did not make a distinction between an innocent and a guilty person. Whoever refrains from killing a person whose soul I have made sacred, and regards it to be forbidden to kill such a person, itis as if he has given life to all people. Because in such an action lies the safety of all people. My messengers brought to the Israelites clear signs and evidences. Despite this many of them overstepped my limits by committing sins and going against the messengers. Almida 32 Islamic law protects the lives of 1. A Muslim 2. A non-Muslim citizen of a Muslim country 3. Non-Muslims who have peace treaties with Muslim countries 4. Any non-Muslim who has taken temporary residence in a Muslim country At the same time, taking life is not always an evil deed. Shedding of human blood by another is strictly prohibited unless it is legislated by God such as the killing of a murderer capital punishment, etc. Ten Commandments in the Quran, Part 3 of Three Commandments 6x. Description, Moral Guidance for Today's World Dealing with Orphans, Fairness, Justice, Fulfilling God's Covenant, and Walking on God's Path. Sixth Commandment, Come not near to the orphan's property, except to improve it, until he, or she, attains the age of full strength. Divine Wisdom dictated that the religion of Islam be delivered to humanity at the hands of an orphan, someone who God raised to convey his final message to humanity. Quite naturally, orphans are more than mere shadows in Islam. Islamic law defines an orphan to be a child that who is deprived of the benefits of parenting by death of the father. Much like the Arab society before Islam, orphans do not fare much better in the U.S. today. Today there are estimated over 132 million orphans in the world. Over 25 million American children, more than one in three, are being raised in a family without a over 50% of youth in shelters and on the streets reported that their parents either told them to leave or knew they were leaving but did not care. As many as 2.8 million children live on the streets, a third of whom are lured into prostitution within 48 hours of leaving home. One in eight youth under the age of 18 will leave home and become homeless in need of services. In 2007, 513,000 orphan children lived outside of the home in substitutive foster care. The Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act of 2005 cited the congressional finding that 100,000 to 300,000 children in the United States are at risk for commercial sexual exploitation at any. A University of Pennsylvania study estimates nearly 300,000 children in the United States are at risk of being sexually exploited for commercial uses. The Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act of 2005 cited the congressional finding that 100,000 to 300,000 children in the United States are at risk for commercial sexual exploitation at any. A University of Pennsylvania study estimates nearly 300,000 children in the United States are at risk of being sexually exploited for commercial uses. In the U.S., the word orphan is rarely used. According to Dr. Francine Kunos, author of City of One. A memoir. Today's orphans in the United States are foster care children. The term foster children is often used for children in foster homes, group homes, and institutions. 22 verses of the Muslim scripture emphasize taking care of the orphans. Islam protected the orphans from being neglected and legislated rights for them. One of those rights, formulated as a commandment, is to spend money for their benefit. Today, in the U.S., that would mean, for example, that the foster parents should spend the $420 a month that is the national average, they receive per child for the welfare of the child in the best possible manner. Seventh Commandment, Give Full Measure and Full Weight with Justice The commandment has to do with fairness and justice in all matters, financial and otherwise. Fair dealing with fellow human beings is God's command. 
The big question is how you can stand by the principle of fair dealing, especially in business, when it seems so advantageous not to. Why should you be fair in an unfair world? The simple answer, it's God's command. God wants us to be ethical and play fairly. You must first accept the basic commandment and moral principle of fair and honest practices. Widespread economic and racial inequalities, unfair lending practices, and lack of affordable housing makes one wonder, what justice and whose justice? The answer is justice according to God's rules. The only way to solve them is to fulfill God's command and give others their dues. Eight Commandment Whenever you speak, say the truth even if a near relative is concerned. The commandment is not limited to fairness in speech, it includes behavior. God requires us to treat others fairly, including the relatives. If a parent or a friend makes a mistake, should we say that he is in error? Yes, knowing full well that it is not a license to be rude and insulting, but a matter of fairness. In a similar vein, favoritism, cronyism, and nepotism are unethical. Islam commands its followers to be ethical and just in the face of conflicting emotions like love and hatred for the other. A Muslim is required to speak the truth and be honest without getting influenced by the relatives. Ninth Commandment Fulfill the Covenant of God In general, fulfilling covenants and keeping pledges is one of the foundations of Islam. It ensures trust, maintains justice, and brings equality in society. In specific, a Muslim is required to keep his covenant with God. The basic principle of Islam is that God commands and forbids, hence God is to be obeyed. The covenant of God is the promise made to God that acknowledges this basic principle. As a consequence, God rewards and punishes. A Muslim is supposed to fulfill pledges and keep promises. It is an indication of loyalty to his word and to God. Negligence in this matter indicates hypocrisy. Aptly, God ends with an emphasis. This is what he commands you to do, so that you may bear in mind. So, if you have not already made a promise to God to obey him, then now is the time to do so. Tenth Commandment, and indeed this is my straight path, so follow it, and do not follow other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. This he has ordained for you that you may become pious. The last commandment is the most comprehensive, combining in itself the entire religion. God basically tells us that this is my straight path, you must follow it. The straight path of God is his religion that he sent us through his prophets, completing it with his final message which he sent through Prophet Muhammad. May the mercy and blessings of God be upon him. Every human being is required to follow this final message of Islam and leave all other paths. All other paths, without exception, lead a person away from God and that amounts to destruction. The other, paths, are ancient religions that have been corrupted or cancelled as well as misleading ideologies and philosophies. Sticking closely to God's straight path keeps one protected from slipping or losing their way. Thus we conclude the Ten Commandments from God that are relevant and applicable to our times, and provide the best framework to develop the spiritual side of human beings.